dear students myself dr rakesh kumar assistant professor department of geology government pg college ambala kent today we shall discuss about the topic phylum cylindrata type study obilia cipher <coughs> obilia is a sedentary colonial marine cnidarians which grow upright in a branching tree like form and has several specialized feeding and reproductive polyps it is commonly called cefer and exist in both asexual sessile polypoid stage and sexual free swimming metazoid phase the common species of abelias are four type first one is the abelia geniculata that is known as knotted thread hydroid second abelia longissima sessile hydroid third one is the abelia dichotoma C thread hydroid. Fourth is the Obelia bidentata, double tooth hydroid. Habit and habitat. Obelia is a cosmopolitan distribution, all the adjacent being the high Arctic and Antarctic seas. They grow in shallow water in intertidal rocks, poles, and are usually found up to 80 to 100 meters of depth from the water surface. The medusa stage of Abelia species is commonly found in the coastal and offshore plankton around the world. The colony of Abelia are often found as a delicate fur like growth on the rocks, stones, mollusks, seaweeds, wooden pilings, and warps. Abelia geniculata normally grows on kelp, found especially on species Laminaria, Hyperborea, and conditions of the Mineta forms. Figure show this is figure shows Obelia species growing on a kelp types of Laminaria, Hyperborea, and rocky bottoms. Morphology Obelia is a very small marine hydroid. It looks like a small branching tree, exhibiting whitish or brown color. The height of Obelia varies from two cm or more. The body of Obelia consists of two kinds of, of filaments: horizontal in the hydrolyza and vertical is the hydrocolysis. Hydrorhiza, commonly known as root of hydroids. Hydrorhiza is the basal part of the colony consisting of tubular processes called stolon. In, it encrusts over the surface of substratum and helps in the attachment of the colony. Second is the hydrocolysis, commonly known as stem of a hydroid. A few small vertical filament, 2 to 3 cm long, arise from the hydrorhiza. These are called hydrocoli. Each hydrocolysis branches alternate leaves. Each of which terminate into a, into a polyps. The polyps collectively, collectively are termed as joids. The joids are nutritive in function and help in feeding. These are called gastrojoids. The axles of proximal branches bear cylindrical reproductive joids. These are termed as gonojoids, blastojoids, or blastostyles. This is the figure showing. The outline structure of Abelia showing the alternative branches with joids. First is the tentacle, hydrant, medusa birds, hydrocolysis, parisarchs, and gonesiums. Living tissue of Abelia conicinosarch. Whole colony of Abelia, hydrorhizia, hydrocolysis, and joids containing living tissue called Sima or sinosarch. The sinosarch is diploblasting comprising of two layers, outer one in the epidermis and inner one in the gastrodermis. A middle non-cellular layer of the mesoglia is present in between the epidermis and gastrodermis. A narrow canal called sinosarcal canals runs through whole colony of abelia which is continuous with the gastrovascular cavity of the joints. The continuity of the canal system helps to transport the digested food throughout the colony. Epidermis layer. The epidermis is a thin and made up of typical cells of cnidaria. These include epithelial muscular cells, mucus secreting cells, interstitial cells, nerve cells, and metoblasts. The nematocysts are basitricus isorhizia. These consist of an oval capsule, a long thread, hearing spines, and open at the tip. Gastrodermis. It forms the lining of gastrovascular cavity and consists of endolithial muscle cells, the nutritive cells, the gland cells, and nerve cells. Protective covering in the parisac. Entire colony of abelia is surrounded by a protective covering called parisac. It is a non cellular tongue, tough, transparent, yellowish brown, and sporty color in nature, and is all called parisac or periderm. 
it makes the vertical part of the colony thin and result the peri sac is secreted by the epidermis and it is separated from the sino sac by a, a thin fluid filled space however the sino sac and peri sac are in contact making the colony more rigid at some points the peri sac is arranged in flexible rings called annuli these grow these allow the swaying movement due to the force of water currents the peri sac of hydrant is term that hydrotisha and that of the gonojoid is called gonoisium peri sac and alloli the part of the stem and branches of the bilia colony showing in this structure in the alloli morphology of a gastrojoids gastrojoids of a bilia is a feeding polyp its function it feed the whole colony the gastrojoid is a tubular and diploblast diploblastic joids with the central gastrovascular cavity continues with the sinusoidal canal the polyp is attached to the hydrocolysis by a hollow stalk while its distal end it is produced in the conical elevation called menorubium or hypostome the apical portion of the menorubium bears a terminal mouth encircled by the numerous long solid tentacles of 124 loaded with nematoblast the peri sac of gastrojoids called hydrotisha is a transparent and cup shape invaginated a plate form a self at the base of gastrojoids on the polyp to the root the gastrojoids and hydrotisha collectively form hydrant in case of any emergent insertion the polyp can withdraw itself into the hydrotisha and the tentacles fold over the menorubium cover in the mouth the presence of self prevent the polyp to the tract into the hydrocolysis the annuli of the peris peri sac present around the stalk of polyp will allow the swaying movement due to the force of water current this is the structure is showing in the structure of gastrojoids and gonojoids morphology of a gonojoids gonojoids are also called blastojoids or blastostyles are cylindrical rod like reproductive bodies present in the axil of hydrocolysis and stalk of gastrojoids the gonojoids are less in number and then gastrojoids as these present only in the proximal part of the colony it has a reduced gastrovascular cavity and is devoid of mouth and tentacles it thus cannot feed and receive food digested by the gastrojoids and are uh, transported through the gastrovascular cavity like other part of the colony gonojoids are also enclosed in a peri sac called gonotisha it is constricted and distally and constructed by the annuli proximally the apical part of the gonotisha has a opening called gonopore the gonojoids uh, produce a numerous small medusa or gonopore by the asexual process of budding mature medusa detach from the gonojoid and space into the surrounding water through of the gonopore the gonojoids gonopore and gonotisha collectively form in a gonisium morphology of a medusa Medusa of Eobilia is a readily symmetrical umbrella like joints which measures approximately 6 to 7 mm in diameter the outer surface of medusa is convex and known as exomblader surface while the inner concave surface is called submembrane surface a short menorubium containing as a quadrangular mouth at its distal end hang from the center of the submembrane surface the medusa is a crispidoid type as as is produced inward into the insignificant rudimentary velum the margin of the medusa bears initially 16 short contractile tentacles which gradually increase in number the mouth open into a short gullet which leads to a wide expanded stomach from which arises for narrow radial canal which marks the four principal parietes the radial canal extend till the margin of umbrella and open into the circular canal running parallel to the margin the radius bisecting two per radii is called inter radius four in number and that bisecting per radius and adjacent inter radius is termed as add radius eight number the tentacles present at the end of the these radii are named accordingly such as per radial tentacles inter radial tentacles and so on whole system of canal is lined by an inner layer of gastrodermis and both the exomblader and subumbrella surface are covered by epidermis nervous system consists of two diffuse nerve nets which are con con concentrated around the margin of umbrella and form of two circular nerve rings 
gated septal organ called steatocysts are present at the basis of atrial tentacles. These are the organ of balance, muscular coordination, and equilibrium. Medusa process for the nets on the submembranous surface. These are per radial position, and each of these present in the middle of each radial canal. These are dioecious the male and female medusa being separated. Oral view of the medusa showing the figure. Lateral view of the medusa showing in the figure. Locomotion in obelia. Movement in polyps. The polypoid colony of obelia is a sessile and attached to the septum. It does not move from place to place. However, polyps activate a certain movements under the force of water current due to the presence of anole in the perisar. The polyps can also undergo contraction and extension because of the presence of longitudinal circular muscles in the body wall. Locomotion in the medusa. Hydropropulsions. The medusas are three swimming forms. They generally swim in the water by jet propulsion method. The contraction and expansion of bell muscles alternatively closes to open the bell, which forces water out the subumbrellar cavity downward the propel of the body upward directions. The contraction, the contraction of the epidermal muscle tails of subumbrellar surface helps in the closure of bell cavity, while the opening of the bell is brought about the elastic visually and contractions of the muscle tails in the middle of the upper surface. This kind of jet propulsion methods is also called hydropropulsion and uh, second passive drifting. Medusas are also drift and float passively in the sea water under the force of strong water currents and wind. Thick misuli of medusa provide in the floating. Nutations in the obelia. Nutation in the polyps, gastrojoids are nutritive joints in the obelia colony. They are primarily carnivorous and feed upon small crustaceans, tadpoles, worms, insect larvae, etc. The gastrojoid captures the food with the help of nematocysts present on the tentacles. The food is pushed into the gastrovascular cavity throughout the mouth where the proteolytic enzyme secreted by the gastrodermal gland cells partially digested to the foods. The semi-digested food is engulfed by the food vacuoles by the nutritive cell by for complete digestion. Thus, digestion is both extracellular and intracellular. The digester product of the foods are distributed throughout the body by cell to cell diffusion, helped by the beating of lazella of gastrodermal cells. The gastrovascular cavity is serving for both digestion and transportation of food. The undigested food material is digested through the mouth of gastrojoids. Notation in Medusa The process of feeding in Medusa is similar to the polyps. Medusa is strictly carnivorous and capture food with the help of tentacles by set with the nematocyst. As in polyps, in the food digested for the extracellular and intracellular, but excessively in the stomach. Digested food is distributed to whole body through of the network of radial and circular canal present in the Medusa. Respiration in Obelia. Obelia does not have any respiratory organ, and then the gas exchange takes place by the diffusion through the general body surface. Oxygen diffuses directly from the surrounding water into the epidermal cells and carbon dioxide is diffused out. The diffusion of gases can also take place during the circulation of water in the gastrovascular cavity of polyp or medusa as there is continuous influx of water. Here exchange of gases take place between the water and the gastrodermal cells from where oxygen diffuses to a cell of the obelia. Accretions and osmoregulation in the obelia. Obelia does not have special excretory or osmodulatory organs. It excretes nitrogen waste in the form of ammonia that diffuses through the body wall, attracts water in throughout of the gastrovascular cavity through the mouth, thus mouth being a single opening function as a contractile vacuole also. Sense organ, statocyst, polyp of obelia as a Sessile joids as they do not require any sense organs. However, medusas are free swimming joids and while swimming their body may tilt and lose balance. Thus they possess balancing organs statocyst with the help of which they can regain their position. Structure is statocyst a fluid filled sac lined by the sensory epithelial cells. The basal part of the cell is connected to the nerve cells. While the inner ends bear sensory processes, the cavity of statocyst contains around particles of calcium carbonate called statolith or otolith. 
the particle is movable and secreted by large cell lithocytes. Function statosis help in balance and equilibrium of Medusa. While swimming, if the Medusa gets the movable particles of tatolith are all over the tilted side and paralysis engage the sensory processes. The stimulated cells transmit in the nerve impulse to the nerve ring, which is connected to the muscle tails. The nerve impulse causes the rapid constriction of the muscle tails of the stimulated side, attaining the original position of the Medusa. Reproduction in Mobilia. The life cycle of Mobilia includes both polyps and Medusa stages. Polyp is an asexual form and reproduced by asexual means while the Medusa is a sexual joint and reproduced sexually. Asexual reproduction, the polyp reproduces asexually by the process of budding. The hydrocolysis gives rise to the number of gastrojoids and they are colony mature. Blastocyte bud form in the axle of proximal gastrojoids and hydrocolysis. Each blastocyte produces a large number of Medusa buds in the spring and summer. These birds are gradually developed and mature. When fully formed, they detach to the blastocyte and escape into the water through a propagonopore. This is the structure showing the development of Medusa in Abelia. Sexual reproduction. The sexual reproduction in Abelia takes place in the Medusa stage. The male and female Medusa being separate. The Medusa produces ova and sperms and leads into the water where fertilization takes place. Sperms may also enter the female Medusa along with their water current and fertilization may take place inside the body of female Medusa. The development of fertilized egg. The fertilized eggs undergo complete and equal cleavage resulting in the formation of solid ball of cells called marula. It develops a central cavity, blastocele surrounded by a largely arranged blastomeres. This hollow blastella is termed as cegoblastula. Gradually, the new cells cut off from the blastomeres and start migrating into the blastocele from one end to the cegoblastula. Slowly, entire blastocele is filled with the cells and the hollow blastula converts into solid gastrula called the stereogastrula by delimination. The outer surface of embryo becomes ciliated, forming a ciliated larva, planula larva. It is double layered ovoid larva consisting of outer ciliated ectoderm and inner solid mass of endodermal cells. It actively swims in the water and helps in the dispersal of species. After a short period of time, a larva settles down and attaches itself a substratum by one end of its end. The attach and forms a basal disc while a mouth surrounded by tentacle is formed by the distal and this sile stage is termed as hydrola stage as it resembles as a hydra. Gradually, hydrola undergo a sexual reproduction repeatedly and converts into the adult Gabilia colony. This is the structure showing the <laughs> diagrammatic view of the life cycle of Abelia. Is the male Medusa and female Medusa, then in the fertilized egg, in the planula larva, then in the polyps with developing Medusa, oral surface of Medusa in large and diagrammatic view of the life cycle of Abelia. Metagenesis. The life cycle of Abelia represents a remarkable example of alternation of generation where the asexual and the side phase of Abelia reproduce asexually by wedding, give rise to sexual and free swimming Medusa. The Medusa reproduce sexually and form new polyps, thus a diploid asexual hydroid phase alternate with another diploid sexual medusoid phase. This phenomenon of alternation between the two diploid phases is termed as metagenesis. This is the structure showing the development and uh, detailed view of the life cycle of the obelia. Polymorphisms. Thus, the life cycle of the obelia includes three distinct types of joints. First is the nutritive polyps in the hydrinth. Second is the asexual reproductive polyps, the blastocyte. Third is the sexual reproductive polyps, medusa. This phenomena where the obelia is represented by a structurally and functionally different individuals is called polymorphism. Initially, the colony of Abelia is represented by only two forms, gastrojoids and blastojoid, and is called dimorphic. Later, when the gonopod develops on the blastojoid by the process of budding, the colony is considered dimorphic, represented by three kinds of joids. Thanks. So students, this is all about the phylum cylindrata, the type study 
or Bilia Seifert. Thank you.